discipline to really stop crime before it starts. And we are taking a public health perspective to address the leading causes of gun violence that plague our city day in and day out. With mayors on this call and also with other mayors across the state, uh, we intend to form a cross jurisdictional task force to look at other ways we can truly keep our city safe despite these dangerous gun laws being passed in Columbus. And so it's critical that we get common sense reforms, not just in Washington, DC, but in Columbus. And I'm pleading with our lawmakers in Columbus to help us keep our city safe as we prepare for this summer's activity in our respective cities. Now I'm gonna kick it off to my chief of police, Wayne Drummond, to talk about some work we're doing to prepare for SB 215 right here in Cleveland. Chief Drummond. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Bibb, appreciate it. And thank you all the other mayors and police chiefs that's uh, joining us as well. Um, as uh, Mayor Bibb just stated, uh, SB 215 was signed into law. It takes effect today. Um, uh, to that end, uh, what I've done here in the city of Cleveland uh, to help keep our officers uh, safe is we are going to make sure that uh, during traffic uh, stops, uh, and other engagement with individuals, uh, our officers are going to be required to uh, ask individuals if they are armed. That's the first thing. Uh, those who are on this uh, call who are law enforcement officers otherwise uh, know that uh, two of the most dangerous things you can do as a police officer is our domestic violence, those situations, and then traffic stops. Traffic stops in themselves are pretty dangerous, or they can be. Um, and then taking that provision of the law uh, that requires individuals to notify law enforcement officers when they're for, uh, notify law enforcement officers as they approach a vehicle that they're armed, I think uh, uh, poses problems or potential problems. Um, having our officers ask individuals if they're armed um, is a smart uh, policing, I believe. Um, the, the law states in US SB uh, 215 states that uh, we can ask and uh, the individuals are required to answer uh, truthfully, and if not, obviously that they could face an M1. So that's part of our requirements here. So we're looking for common sense uh, gun laws uh, for the city of Cleveland and, and uh, the state of Ohio. And uh, I, I don't believe this particular bill is that. Uh, I think it could potentially uh, endanger our officers. Uh, and again, that's why we are requiring our officers to ask everyone that they approach relative to traffic stops and engagements if they're armed. Um, I look forward to answering any other questions or any questions that may come up. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mayor Bibb and uh, Chief Drummond. You know, the leading cause of death uh, for the first time in America's history among children and adolescents is now gun related injuries for 2020, according to the CDC, for children ages one to 19. So this surpassed motor vehicle crashes and deaths. It's an increase of 30% from 2019 and double the increase in observed in the general population. Children are dying on the streets of our city, our state and our country like never before in the Republic's history. Gun violence is a public health crisis, especially among our children. Imagine if you would just for a moment that there was a disease or a virus that was killing our children. We would change behavior, limit our exposure. We'd develop a vaccine to protect our kids. Instead with gun violence, we have done the complete opposite, making the cause of death easier to obtain permitless concealed carry, stand your ground. And now ridiculously asking teachers to carry guns in schools into the classroom to protect students with limited training. At the same time, we're passing and signing into law, permitless carry, stand your ground, adding to the proliferation of guns across our cities states and country. State legislature passed a statewide preemption law on firearm regulations, meaning local governments cannot take actions that will protect our communities. 
In Columbus, we've declared gun violence a public health crisis and our public health commission is looking to other cities for practices that have worked. We've also formed a coalition to push for common sense gun laws. We also formed the Columbus Alliance Against Illegal Guns, a coalition of residents, community leaders, faith leaders, medical professionals working together to get meaningful reforms to make our city safe. As Mayor Bibb mentioned, we're announcing today to put a similar type of statewide coalition together, working with law enforcement, our police chiefs, our city attorneys and law directors, our public health commissions and health directors to work together figure out how we can reduce gun violence and make our children and our families safer from around the state. But we are frustrated and angered by having our hands tied on protecting our residents. As I have said before, if you lack the courage and will to make these tough decisions, at least get out of our way so that mayors can step up to protect their communities. This gun violence isn't just on the hands of families and children, but it also puts our law enforcement officers under unprecedented attacks. This proliferation of guns is a direct threat to the life, well being, and safety of our police officers. I wanted to ask uh, our police chief, Elaine Bryant, to speak a little bit to that. Chief. Thank you, Mayor Benson. SB 215 is not a good thing for law enforcement. It's not a good thing for the community. It's not good, a good thing for our residents. Last year in Columbus, we experienced our highest homicide rate ever, 204 lives lost, and 91% of them were caused by firearms. I've talked to countless mothers who have lost a child to gun violence. No one wants to be in that situation. No one wants to feel that pain. So far this year, our officers have confiscated over 1,400 firearms. That's just this year alone. In a six year period, we've confiscated over 15,336 firearms off the streets of Columbus. We're making progress reducing homicides with 40% fewer than, the same, than, than this same time last year. And we're solving homicides, taking dangerous criminals off the streets. I credit that to the diligent work of our police officers and to our community who has stepped forward with information on crimes. This year, we are seeing a 75% of our felonious assaults are due to gun violence. 75% are due to gun violence. But today, a permitless concealed carry law goes into effect, making our residents and our police officers in even greater danger. As police chief, it is my job to keep these residents safe and to make sure our police officers make it home to their families at the end of every shift. Today law, it makes that even more difficult. I join police chiefs in other Ohio cities and across the country calling for common sense regulations to keep guns out of the hands of those who have no business carrying them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Chief Bryant, now I'd like to uh, introduce and invite uh, Akron Mayor Dan Horgan and Akron, Akron Deputy Police Chief Brian Harding uh, to share a few words. Mayor Horgan. Yeah, hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I apologize for the no video and, the, and probably poor cell connection, um, but I, I would uh, echo the sentiments of my colleagues and, and just mention, you know, there's a significant amount of resources that we are all putting towards um, you know, youth opportunity and youth violence and the reduction of the accessibility to guns. And I, I would urge our state lawmakers is that you know, as a collection of Ohio's largest cities calling for action, we are an extremely large constituency, a lot like you know, suburban and rural areas. And, there, and things are different um, when it comes to cities and, and how we police them. And I would urge them to, you know, on the whole common sense side, is to, to take our you know, advice, you know, with a serious note, um, just because we all have to deal with those particular issues. And as we put more money into um, those youth opportunities and reducing the access to guns, um, those are all good things for cities and can be positive for the state, too. So um, and I, I'll keep it a, a little shorter just because I think there's been great points made is that you see a, a, an attitude in Columbus that is almost anti-city when it comes to this particular part. And I'll stand with law enforcement to make our city safer. And I'll 
invite uh, Deputy Chief Brian Harding to, to add a few words from uh, the public safety perspective. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ginter, Mayor Bibb, um, and all who have joined this conference. Thanks, Mayor Hogan. Thanks, uh, mayors and other police chiefs. And similar to what the other chiefs have said, same with Akron. Most of our crime or significantly violent crime is gun related in the city of Akron. And we're, I think our community is less safe today with, the, with this new bill being passed. Our officers are less safe without the requirement to be notified on a traffic stop. As Chief uh, Drummond mentioned before, that's one of the most dangerous things we do in law enforcement. We now are allowing people that are 21 years old and have no training to walk around with a loaded firearm. That, that's concerning to us in law enforcement. I implore our elected officials to work together for sensible gun reform. That's what we need. We need to make our community stronger and this bill is not a step in the right direction. So thank you for that. Thank you, uh, Mayor Horrigan and Deputy Chief uh, Harding. Now I'd like to invite uh, Cincinnati Mayor Aftab Puravala to say a few words. Mayor Aft Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, if, if there's one clear thing that we're hearing over and over from our mayors in Ohio, but also repeatedly from cities across the country, it's that local governments are pleading. We're pleading with the federal government and pleading with our state legislatures to be allowed to implement the common sense tools to keep our community safe. Every day, including this past weekend, we see in our cities the tragedy that stems from the universal accessibility of guns, from the fact that because of the unchecked prevalence of deadly weapons, conflicts that would have been resolved by a fistfight a few decades ago now result in a shootout and death. So, so we can't wait around for the debates in Columbus and Washington to run their course because people are dying on our streets. They're dying in our schools and our grocery stores, and it's our sworn duty to take action to prevent that. But with our hands tied, we're really held back from doing what the research and the countless victims and advocates out there understand is needed. And, and that's why all of us are here today. One trend we see again and again in these senseless tragedies is that there's a pattern of behavior leading up to it. Maybe friends and family were aware of signs of trouble and they, they raised red flags or sought resources. Maybe law enforcement had tried to intervene with the authority available to them, but too often were able to look back and see patterns. Patterns that with the right authority we could have addressed, and yet these perpetrators of violence still had access to a deadly weapon. Mayor, Mayor Ginther touched on this, but it's important to reiterate. There are important and effective prevention options that cities in Ohio do not have access to. Extreme risk prote protection orders give concerned family members or law enforcement the ability to take legal action to get guns out of the hands of someone who pose an extreme risk to themselves and others. They can temporarily remove lethal weapons during a critical moment, but before a tragedy occurs. Cities in nearly half of the United States have this option. It has bipartisan support in red states and blue states, but due to the broad preemption in Ohio, we, we don't have access to it. Due to state law, cities in Ohio also do not have the ability to pass safe storage laws. <clears throat> when you own a deadly weapon, your local government, we should have the ability to require steps to keep it out of the hands of children or those around you who are at risk. And measures like this aren't just important for preventing the unacceptable mass shootings we've seen around the nation. Research shows they can have a significant impact on preventing suicide and self-harm. We can do something that evidence shows will make a difference. When it comes to these measures, to our inability to limit magazine capacity, to the harm caused to our cities by statewide decisions to put more permitless guns on the streets and in our schools, we are simply asking to be able to do what our communities are begging for. Our city have unique needs, unique challenges, and in order to do everything we can to protect our residents, we need lawmakers in Columbus to empower us to do what we are elected to do. Thank you so much. Back to you, Mayor Ginther. Thank you, uh, Mayor Puroval. Appreciate uh, your participation, your leadership, your advocacy. Next up is Mayor Wade Kapsikavich from the city of Cleveland. I think we first have to recognize that this is an American problem. 
Unfortunately, this is a problem that doesn't exist any other country on the face of the planet. Now, there's mental illness in Canada too. They play violent, uh, they watch violent movies in Europe too. Uh, there are video games where people get blown up and all kinds of crazy things happen in Australia too. But yet those places don't have the sort of mass gun violence that we have in the United States. Because only in this country have our lawmakers, I'll say it, fundamentally given up. Only in this country have our lawmakers fundamentally uh, prostrated themselves to the NRA. And that's why we have to deal with this. We're such a great country. Uh, we, uh, you know, we had a president who for the last 25 years of his life it was stuck in a wheelchair because of polio. You know what we did? We got together to the March of Dimes and research. Now no one gets polio. As of, I think, 1994, the CDC, polio's gone. We beat it. We can do it. We can do tough things when we put our mind to it. You want to put a man on the moon? We can do that too. Now we're going to go to Mars. We can do anything. But for some reason, when it comes to merely achieving the reality that already exists on the entire rest of the planet. Oh, it's too hard. Oh, you can't do it. Well, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have, have to have a few deaths to make a freedom omelet. I'm sick of it. And I'm sick of the fact that that defeatist can't do coward attitude has come to my state, Ohio, also a great state. You want, uh, you want a light bulb? Good. Thomas said it's uh, You want a dog to bark? Someone can do that too. <laughs> it's not here in this office, but, but, uh, uh, but, but it's happening. You want someone to face, uh, face down Adolf Hitler in Berlin in 1936? Good. Good thing there was a Clevelander named Jesse Owens. Talked about a man on the moon. A man from Wapakoneta did that. You want to orbit the earth? Go to New Concord and talk to John Glenn. And yet we do all those things. And when it comes to gun violence, we quit. In August of 2019, there was a, something you hardly ever see in politics anymore, an unscripted moment. It's the day after the Oregon shooting down in Dayton. The governor's on stage, giving his remarks. And then someone way in the back yells, do something. And then a woman in the front yells, do something. And before you know it, the crowd is chanting, do something, do something, do something. It was, it was a, a, a wonderfully viral moment, completely unscripted. And the governor said he was going to do something. And I feel like a putz for believing him. Because in reality, he did do something. He made the problem worse. In the last year, he has signed Stand Your Ground, Permitless Carry, and now Guns for Teachers. Yeah, he did something all right. He gave in like a coward and he made the problem worse. I'm sick of it. When you, when you think about what happened in Uvalde, uh, over an hour, for over an hour, we hear about the good guns with guns. There's the only way to stop a good person with guns is a, or a bad person with guns is with a good person with guns. Well, the good people with guns were there, but it took them about an hour to get in there. Turns out they weren't, they weren't necessarily fired up about going in to take on a mentally ill 18 year old with an AR-15 and a death wish. But don't worry, our state legislature's got that covered. Mabel, the kindergarten teacher will take care of that. It's lunacy and it's ludicrous. And if no one else cares, the mayors of this city care and we're desperate to solve the problem. We just need a legislature that if they're not gonna care, if they fundamentally don't care, then just get the hell out of the way and let us serve our citizens. Let us try to make a difference. We, we're not ready to quit. We're not ready to throw up our hands and adopt the can't do attitude that we see too much in Columbus. And what we're trying to do today is to encourage the legislature to simply get out of the way, stop making the problem worse uh, and let us serve our cities. Thank you, Mayor, uh, Mayor Caps Cabot. Uh, last but certainly not least, I'd like to invite Mayor Jeff Mims from Dayton to share a few words. Mayor.
I think you're on mute, Mayor. Okay, I think we're good now. You know, um, thanks, uh, Mayor Catch Cabbage, for talking about uh, the situation in the Oregon District. You know, that, that still creates um, a tremendous amount of pain once you go back and, and try to live some of the times uh, since, that, uh, since that shooting. You know, August 4th, and now almost three years ago, you know, um, a, a young man armed uh, with a military style weapon, uh, much like those that um, I use in Vietnam, and he shot 26 people and killed nine of them. And that short time frame, just 32 seconds. You know, that, that mass shooting in Dayton just still resonates in the hearts and minds of the citizens here in, in Dayton. And being there the morning of with, with ministers as individuals were being notified of the circumstances regarding loved ones that they've had, I can't tell you just how painful, just how painful it was. And when we look at the type of things that we've asked uh, the governor to do, as we mentioned, it was mentioned before, uh, to do something over and over and over again. And the governor said that he would. And as you've already heard, he's done nothing but make it worse. I can't believe that in 2022, we have this attitude of providing more and more accessibility to weapons. And we've even looked at um, some of the kind of lawsuits that we've been trying to fight to support that would minimize individuals having a weapons with a hundred round magazine. I mean, can you imagine that? And, and, and looking at just the short time frame that those individuals who are perpetrators would take to snuff out the lives of so many young people or older people, as we know also in, in, in Buffalo. So it's, it's painful again as we go back and forth to look at what's happening at the state legislature, look at the fact that they're now passing uh, this most recent bill they signed um, to put more guns in the presence of people and have minimal training 